Welcome back. With us now is Congressman Brett Guthrie. Thanks for joining us, Congressman. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. In March, you hosted a government-contracted information fair. Tell us how this benefited small business. Well, the most important thing going on in the country today is jobs. I mean, people are saying, where are the jobs? We're two years uh, past the stimulus bill being passed, and last year was the, was the anniversary that the president said recovery summer. Here we are still at 9.1 percent employment throughout the country and, and over 10 percent in Kentucky. And one of the biggest economic development opportunities in the whole state is going on at Fort Knox. Uh, the Army is unfortunately moving the cavalry post down to Fort Benning, but bringing in civilian, the Human Resources Command and other commands, Cadet Command, and, and just built a, you know, a billion dollar building. And so a lot of people are saying, how do we participate in the construction, which a lot of it is, is done, but it's going to be some, some supporting construction to be done, or just serving there. And so what we wanted to do is make, give an opportunity for small businesses to come together and say, how do I, as a local small business, work with the federal government? A lot of decisions are made at, Fort, some are made at Fort Knox, but a lot are made in Washington. So how do we access that? And that's what we were trying to do, is how do we marry up local businesses to have opportunities at, at the boom at Fort Knox? And you know, we have Mammoth Cave National Park, we have the historic sites for Abraham Lincoln. So there are other opportunities, but that obviously is the big one we were really focused on. The Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development provided valuable information. Share what they offered. Well, they, they came and made a presentation. We had several groups, the Government Services Administration, we had the Economic Development Cabinet, as you said, and, and looking at what opportunities are there uh, to help to small businesses, because you know, we spend what, almost three and a half, over a little over three and a half trillion dollars from the federal level, and, and so there are a lot of controls, a lot of bureaucratic um, issues to try to make sure the money spent correctly and sometimes that makes it extremely difficult for people to access small small business to go forward so the economic development cabinet in frankfurt actually has a um, an arm or a division that helps small businesses access federal government and state government contracts so that everybody can participate and if you've got a, a good to offer and the government needs to buy it we want to buy it local and we want to buy it with small businesses the people who really create jobs and so they were focused on there's a couple of if you go to uh, actually the website for our office, which is guthrie.house.gov, or you could just Google, and, and, or, or Yahoo, or however you want to say it, whatever you use, and go to our, our main webpage, and the, the presentation by, by the Economic Development Cabinet, the GSA, all of them are on, on there. Small businesses have opportunity to connect with the military. Share more on this. Well, it's with the Fort Knox. It's, the military has opportunities for a couple of things. One, if a small business person is a veteran, they can get preferential treatment. Uh, there, there's written into the laws to ensure that, especially a disabled veteran, if you're a disabled veteran, then you can go to the, the top of the pile, so to speak, when they start looking at different uh, contracts. So they'll have a big contract with a major um, construction company. They have to say, okay, a certain portion of our business are gonna be veterans, minorities, women, and so that's a great opportunity. So if somebody out there is a disabled veteran that has a business or service that is, is servicing Fort Knox, there was a story, we actually did it, and we weren't able to get the same guy to come to Bowling Green, but we did this in, in uh, Hardin County. And there was a gentleman from Caneyville who's a disabled veteran. He's really built a very successful business serving Fort Knox. Tell us more about the Small Business Administration Division and how businesses benefit from this. The best thing to do actually is go, because it depends on what business the service, what service the business is offering. So if people go to the website, guthrie.house.gov, and, and look at the presentation, you'll see where they fit. There are two um, websites they can go to directly or, or you can link from there. It's gsa.gov, that's the Government Service Administration. They minister the grounds and the buildings for the federal government. And the other is bizops, but it's spelled with a B-I-Z-O-P-P-S, I think. But you can go to the website. It, it, you can go to our website and, and go there, and it, it lets businesses match their opportunities. You can put in the type of business you are, the type of service you have, and it will uh, print out or, or, or spell out for you different opportunities in the area that you may have the opportunity to bid on. What advice do you have for small business owners in these uncertain times? Well, you know, that's the biggest problem we have in the country is how uncertain the economy is for small business people to invest, and a lot of it was, was created by Washington in the last couple of years. We have... Uh, uh, we had the health care bill. I mean, everywhere I go, I hear a lot of business people saying, I have no idea how much the health care bill is going to cost me. How's it going to affect me? And, and as Speaker Pelosi said when she was Speaker, we have to pass it before we know what's in it. And, and I'm not saying that just to, to say what that she said. She did say that. That's a quote. But the issue of it is, is that the legislative branch in that bill really turned over a lot of authority 
to the executive branch to write rules and regulations. And until those are in place, it's hard to tell a small business. You know, and, and it, you know, it starts with 25 people or more. So, you know, if you're a one or two person business, it's not an effect in you. As, but a lot of the jobs come from businesses from 25 to 100 people, and, and, and they just can't plan uh, what their costs for their employees are going to be to hire somebody new. That's uncertain about them. We also passed, they call the Dodd-Frank bill, which was a, an overview of banks. We had new Wall Street banks that were running wild, and so we passed this, this massive bill that has almost 300 rules and regulations to still be written. So banks don't know what to do to lend credit to small businesses, so that's a problem. And we're trying to, to repeal the health care bill and replace it with a, more, uh, with a better bill, and we're trying to, to reform the Dodd-Frank bill, because what really happened, it was, it was a handful of big banks, and every bank now has been brought into this web of bureaucracy with rules yet to be written. And, and it's, it's almost like the deal where your teacher left the room in elementary school and a couple of people acted up and the teacher came back and said, well, I'm holding, I'm, nobody's going to get lunch or recess or whatever that day. And, and the most affected are small banks. In Kentucky, because of our former banking laws, we have community banks. You go to every county, uh, they're all over the place and, and they're all affected. They're going to have to participate with, and hire staff and lawyers in order to comply with this bill like, New York, like a New York City bank. So if you're a multi $10 billion or more bank and you're a $250 million bank in Kentucky, you've got to comply with the same rules and laws and it's just more expensive for a small bank to do that. You serve on the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Tell us what would interest small business owners there. I think the biggest thing, or there are a couple of things. One is obviously energy prices. Uh, we are focusing on that after the, when, you know, when uh, Gas in 2008 went to $4 a gallon. I think that's, that was the pin that burst the bubble of our economy. Now, we were, had a lot of underlying problems, but $4 gas sent us there because people just had to completely change their spending habits because they had still had to drive. Even though you may not drive to Nashville or Louisville for a weekend trip, you still had to drive to work every day or school. And, and so that really caused a problem. So, But when President Bush at the time then said, we're going to drill in the Gulf at, at a lift all the moratoriums in the Gulf, price dropped. You know, it was $1.89 a gallon average throughout the country, a little less here when President Obama was sworn in. We had a horrible accident last year. It was tra traumatic. I know a lot of people from here go to Destin and Pensacola and those kind of places, and, and there it was disrupting every, it disrupted everyone. But now with the moratorium on drilling in the Gulf, which has been lifted, as the President will say, but they're not permitting any new ones. You can, you can say you can do it, but if you don't permit permit them to allow them to do it, it has the same effect of not drilling in the Gulf. So that, that's been a big problem with gas prices and more oil in the West, in the Rockies, in the oil shell than they have in Saudi Arabia, obviously drilling off Alaska. We're going to have to get our economy away from uh, fossil fuels, but that's going to be a generation or two, in my opinion, in order to get there with the economy and the country and the future that we want, we're going to have to continue to develop our oil resources here. Share some highlights from prior committees you've been involved with. Well, there's a couple of things. One, we're behind in Washington doing a highway bill. Uh, probably the difference in Frankfurt and Washington. People ask me the difference. Frankfurt works to a deadline. You know, the Constitution gives the General Assembly 60 days to get things done. You know, that's something we should look for in Washington because things just linger. Uh, we should have had a transportation bill done last year. We haven't done it. You know, the money, the gas taxes that people pay go to Washington and then they're distributed back to Frankfurt by formula. But, and, and so that's still taking place. So you still see road building going forward. But the highway bill is a five-year bill. And so for it to be, for, for people in Frankfurt to plan, to absolutely know for certain what's gonna happen over the next five years, that, that's been a, a frustration of mine. I think we're gonna try to push something this year out of the House Representatives, but we're, we're waiting to see what the Senate's gonna do, because if, why well, send it over there if the Senate's gonna let it sit. The second thing on education is we are working on No Child Left Behind, reforming that. That was a noble idea, a great uh, thought that we need, we need to make sure that children are, no one is left behind, that's what the title of the bill is. But the problem is it was like, it was, when you administer local education systems through Washington, D.C., it becomes very bureaucratic, very difficult to be successful. And so one of my really good friends is, is uh, ch chairman of the subcommittee, and, that, and, we're, and I'm still interested in that. I'm not on the committee anymore, but to make sure that our schools have the tools they need to be successful, but not run from Washington, D.C. Regarding legislation, what should small business owners specifically be keeping an eye on? 
Well, there's a there's a very important piece of legislation that was actually uh, came from a town hall meeting in Northern Kentucky. Uh, Jeff Davis said, "Anybody have ideas of what we should do?" And a guy suggested, and it's called the Reins Act, and it's Rain in Government Regulation. I can't think of the exact what it all stands for, but what it is, the the, the biggest thing business people tell me one is access to credit, as we talked earlier, uncertainty in some of the bills that have been passed, but just uncertainty in the agencies, the OSHA, EPA just all the different changes and, and, and it's a very aggressive EPA. And so what, in interpreting laws, I think that in ways that have never been interpreted that way and enforcing them in ways that were never enforced, trying to implement cap and trade, which failed in the legislative process, but trying to do it through regulation. So what the RAINS Act, and this is something everybody should pay attention to, I think we're gonna vote out of the House uh, midsummer, is that if any rule or regulation administered by the executive branch will cost the economy more than 100 million, I think we're debating on what that number is, right now it's 100 million, or a substantial cost to the economy, then it has to be approved by Congress. Currently, there's an, a, a law that says if one is onerous, Congress has the right to review it and then say, vote it down. So we're doing that with the uh, Federal Communications Commission taking over the internet. We've passed that out of the House, but you know, it's, it's interesting in this administration is that the internet works, government doesn't, so why should the government try to run the internet? But our only uh, ability now in law is just to undo it. Of course, the Senate, uh, being the, with the President's party, are, aren't undoing this. What we want to say, it's the other way around, is that if something is onerous on the economy, then it has to be affirmed or confirmed by the House and the Senate and signed by the President. We just think that's the... That's what the legislative branch is, is for. You know, there's always struggles between executive power and legislative power and judicial power. And James Madison designed it that way because we didn't want to have one person with all the power. But uh, currently, uh, the administration is really taking a very aggressive view using the regulatory process. And I think that small businesses are being very concerned. It's interesting when farmers, the Farm Bureau comes to Washington, D.C., and they're not talking about the Farm Bill. They're talking about, which is due next year, they're talking about EPA on the farm, trying to regulate farm dust. Dust behind tractors is considered a pollutant. Now, EPA's now since backed off that, but it, so it, that, that's, that's the level we are with these, with these agencies. An elected official's job is not easy. What motivates you to take on this challenge? Well, I really enjoy serving. I, I, I ran for the state senate, you know, well, I guess a dozen years ago now, because I, I got involved in tech schools. Uh, my family business was manufacturing, got involved in trying to create tool and die makers, industrial maintenance people, and, and so I got involved in tech school, and I thought that's an area that state government needed to do better. And, and I think we are with the KCTCS actually was created the year before I got there, but they're doing a good job. I think we're trying to encourage more people to get in those kinds of fields. But overall, education became an issue for me. In my background, I have some military background, so international affairs were interesting. So when Congressman Lewis decided to retire, I thought of an opportunity to take, you know, I always say that, and I really believe this, the, some of the problems in Washington, D.C. is everybody, or a lot of people in Washington think they're the smartest people in the room. And if people would just live the way that they think they should live, then they would have a, everybody would live better. I'm the opposite of that. I realize the people of the second district didn't send the smartest guy living here to Washington, but hopefully they sent somebody that reflects their values, understands how to get things done, and can work. You know, Washington, what's that old book, Everything I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, is play well with others. I mean, can you figure out how to put coalitions together to get things done that's going to turn the country around so our children can have a better future? And I feel that like I do have. A, a strong legislative ability and, and I think a lot of it comes from knowing that I don't always have all the answers but I can find the answers and I can try to implement the answers and have the ability to get people together to do that. Thanks for being on the show today Congressman Guthrie and for your support of the Chamber and our region. Well, I appreciate it. People allow me to serve in Washington. <music>